1996, the International Society for the Study of Vascular Anomalies agreed on a classification of all these vascular anomalies. And this, this classification actually is an excellent biologic classification. Good correlation between clinical features, imaging on different scans, histopathology, some immunostains, and we're now understanding much of the genetics, particularly more so with vascular malformations. But the same applies to vascular tumors where there's good correlation between the clinical and the imaging and the histopathology without any doubt. And we now have certain immunostains which can identify and help us in clarifying some of the problems. So the ISFA group back in 1996 decided and agreed to divide vascular anomalies into vascular tumors which include the common hemangioma that we see in many, many children, and now we call this the infantile hemangioma, the congenital hemangioma, which is different to the infantile hemangioma, and another type of tumor, another type of vascular tumor that we see in infancy and in childhood called KHE, or the Kaposiform hemangioendothelioma. And I'm going to show you examples of all of these in a few minutes. Vascular tumors are true tumors. There may be, they may, they are hypervascular. Some of them have vascular shunts within the tumors, but they are quite different to vascular malformations. Vascular tumors often have a growth which is very different, and I'll show you in a few minutes, for example. They are predominantly endothelial-based tumors, whereas vascular malformations are actually due to errors in vascular morphogenesis, so errors in the development of the vascular channels, which occurs at about fourth week of in utero life. And we know for a simple classification of vascular malformations that they can be divided into whichever particular type of vascular channel is abnormal, whether it's a capillary channel, a venous channel, a lymphatic channel, or an arterial channel. However, from a practical standpoint, it's very useful to divide vascular malformations into slow flow and high flow vascular malformations. Slow flow include capillary, venous, and lymphatic malformations, and high flow include arteriovenous malformations and arteriovenous fistulae. What complicates matters sometimes is that we see some children with very complex combined vascular malformations. So these children have combinations of the vascular channels that we see in vascular malformations. And the two commonest that we see, although rare, are clippel trenoni syndrome and parkes weber syndrome. And I'm going to show you examples, not in this lecture, but later on today, of clippel trenoni syndrome, otherwise we call it KTS, and parkes weber syndrome. For example, the clippel trenoni syndrome is a combination of a capillary, a venous, and a lymphatic malformation. So, accepting this classification has really allowed us to progress significantly in our understanding of these conditions and, f and most importantly to make a diagnosis when we see our patients so that we can institute, if need be, appropriate treatment and avoid unnecessary treatments which can make the situation far worse. So when we look at the growth of vascular anomalies, it's quite interesting. And if we look, for example, uh, comparing um, a, an infantile hemangioma here to a venous malformation, infantile hemangiomas, and these are vascular tumors, a venous malformation is, a, is a one of the types of vascular malformations. Infantile hemangiomas go through a three-phase life cycle. They go through proliferation, and here's a small vascular flat stain on this baby's face it actually progresses very rapidly over about six months uh, of, of, of postnatal life. And this is the, the proliferative phase. And then this lesion then undergoes spontaneous involution. So there's an involutionary period which lasts about five to seven years. And eventually the tumor will disappear and you're left with fibro fatty change when the third phase of the life cycle is known as complete involution. So there's three phases, proliferation, involuting and involuted. Venous malformations and other vascular malformations grow quite differently. They don't have this three-phase life cycle. You have these when you're born. You may not have an infantile and you're likely not to have an infantile hemangioma present at the time of birth. But vascular malformations will be there even though they may not be clinically obvious. And vascular malformations including venous malformations grow in a commensurate fashion with the patient. So as our, the children grow the vascular malformation grows. And you can see even over a two year period between this picture and this picture, the blue slight expansion of the upper lip has increased. 
as these cells grow. So the growth pattern between vascular tumour and vascular malformation is quite different. Now, what about the congenital hemangiomas? Well, these are an interesting subgroup of vascular tumours. They are rarer than the infantile hemangiomas, and they, we now recognise that there are two groups of congenital hemangiomas, the so-called riches and the niches. The riches represent, uh, um, actually stand for rapidly involuting congenital hemangioma, and the niche stands for non-involuting congenital hemangioma. Like most infantile hemangiomas, the diagnosis here is clinical. We do not need imaging. We do not need imaging for most uh, infants with infantile hemangiomas. The riches, the rapidly involuting congenital hemangiomas, and the niches are present at day one of life. They are present at birth. They are maximum in size at birth in comparison to the infantile hemangioma, which may not be evident at birth. These exhibit in utero growth. Infantile hemangiomas are a postnatal event. They, they, exhibit post they exhibit postnatal growth, whereas congenital hemangiomas exhibit uh, anti um, in utero growth. Both the riche and the niche are maximum in size at birth. Often the niche is, and I'm showing you a very gross example of one here, is a much, much less impressive vascular tumour than the riche. This tumour here in this 10-day-old ba term baby near the elbow and the joint is a very com near a joint is a very common location actually undergoes spontaneous involution you can see and it's still involved with some excess skin redundancy near the elbow but this is uh, no treatment has been given this reach rapidly involutes and they usually involute over about 12 months of life the first 12 months of life so during infancy niches however are different they persist throughout life here is a niche in early infancy, in the first year of life in this baby, and in fact it's still present at 15 years of age. They're quite, quite different. So when we look at, if you want to show some growth curves for these uh, tumours, vascular tumours, if you look at the infantile group, here is the very, if this, this is the time axis here, here's birth, uh, time zero. If you look at the, curve, the growth curve for an infantile hemangioma, it looks like this. But however, for the congenital ones, they exhibit in utero growth. If they're a non-involutionary one, as this fairly flat lesion is on the face of this boy here, it persists throughout life. This is a very typical location, a cephalic location actually, for a riche as well, and go spontaneous involution if we left this alone. And in fact, this is a typical growth curve with regression, certainly over about 12 months, sometimes just slightly over 14 or 15 months. Just in passing, the infantile hemangiomas may be superficial when we can see them, or they may be deep, where they may be just enlargement. And in this, in this uh, child here, you can see that this baby has got enlargement in the face due to a parotid hemangioma. So you may not see any skin color change but if there's no dermal involvement. It's the dermal involvement, actually, that gives the, the color change. The niches are diagnosed and the riches clinically. This is a very typical appearance with this blue halo and a pale periphery and some telangiectasias. So we can make the diagnosis of these clinically. From the facial artery injection on onto the venous side. And although there's this lesion here, it does not classically look like a nidus at all. And, and, and so the difference between AVMs and AVFs is in AVFs there's no nidus.